Hey guys, in this video, let's look at a sampling method that is similar to stratified sampling, cluster sampling. This is the last video in our video series on sampling techniques. We looked at three common sampling methods, simple random sampling, systematic sampling, and stratified sampling. If you haven't watched the previous videos yet, you can find all the links in the video description. Let's dive into cluster sampling. If your population is naturally divided into groups that are representative of the whole population, then it may be more cost-effective to select some of these groups using simple random sampling or systematic sampling and include all of the elements and individuals of the selected groups in our sample. This is cluster sampling. Let's consider a simple example. Say we want to survey data scientists in the US, and we found a few tech hubs such as the Seattle metropolitan area, the San Francisco Bay Area, the New York metropolitan area, etc. It means our population of interest is divided into similar groups in different geographic locations. Then we may simply randomly select some locations using simple random sampling and include all data scientists from those locations in our sample. The underlying assumption is that data scientists from a randomly selected geographic area are representative of the whole population of data scientists in the US. If there are too many data scientists in one area and we need to reduce the cost of sampling, we can use simple random sampling or systematic sampling to sample some communes in that area. Then we include all data scientists in those communes as our sample. This will be called multi-stage cluster sampling because we first divide the population of data scientists by location and then by counting in selected locations. Let's look at the pros and cons of cluster sampling. Cluster sampling is practical and relatively easy to use. This type of sampling process enables us to study large populations that would otherwise be too challenging or complicated to analyze. Cluster sampling has a high external validity, which means that the results can be generalized to the whole population. Cluster sampling is also cheap and efficient. In the data scientist example, it reduces expenses needed to cover large geographical populations. We only need to focus on one or a few areas. Cluster sampling also has some drawbacks. Firstly, there is an inherent complexity to cluster sampling, which comes in through the planning of the study. This method often requires more attention because we need to determine how to divide up a larger population efficiently and properly, and ensure that the clusters represent every possible characteristic of the population. Also, cluster sampling is associated with a high sampling error. When the clusters do not mirror the population's characteristics or serve as a mini representation of the population as a whole, there will be less statistical certainty and accuracy. Also, sampling error increases as the number of clustering stages increases. Finally, let's look at the differences between stratified sampling and cluster sampling. Although they appear to be similar, there are different techniques. In both techniques, we start by dividing the population into groups. But what we mean by group is most likely different in the two. In stratified sampling, a group is a characteristic of the population, such as the level of seniority of data scientists. In cluster sampling, a group is a subset of the population that has all of the characteristics of the whole population. In other words, a group is a miniature or smaller version of the population. There is one additional difference between the two sampling methods. In stratified sampling, we randomly select members from every group, ensuring that the proportions in the sample are the same as those in the population. For the data scientist example, we need to sample from all groups, including junior data scientists, senior data scientists, data science managers, and data science leaders. By comparison, in cluster sampling, we randomly select some groups and then include all members of the groups in the sample. For the data scientist example, we can simply roll a die to decide which of the locations we choose, and then we keep all data scientists at those locations in our sample. In this video series, we looked at four common sampling methods, simple random sampling, systematic sampling, stratified sampling, and cluster sampling. Each of these methods have pros and cons. I hope this video series help you understand different sampling techniques and choose which one is appropriate for your analysis and research. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.